In this video, we're going to take a look at yet another web shell. Uh, this is one I came across in, I don't even remember when, but it was an open shell. So wanted to look at functionality, compare it to the last web shell that we looked at. I'll add a link here to the video if you missed that. Um, and what really caught my eye, the reason I wanted to make this video is that uh, it was a little bit more obfuscated. So we'll spend some time deobfuscating that PHP. Before we do that though, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and of course leave comments, really value any feedback that you all can give. It helps the channel to grow, it helps me to understand what you find valuable and of course what you don't. Um, so uh, subscribe and like, really appreciate it. Okay, with that, um, let's get started. So with the previous video, we took a look at an older WSO 2.5 shell. As you can see here, this is what it looks like. Um, and there is the title with the version. This shell has, uh, I think, a much nicer looking theme, uh, but it also looks very similar. And let me just reload this. You can see we have uh, sort of the default page here will be the file listing. Um, it has very similar structure and also very similar capabilities. There are some additional functionality here that I have observed. I haven't really dug into it though. Uh, for example, it has this, um, this delivery test. There is also, let's see, infect which is a bit ominous because uh, all it says is, do you really want to infect the server? Yes. <laughs> so um, this could be a reason that we'd want to actually dig into and understand what's going on behind the scenes with this shell so that we can look at the source code and piece together exactly what's going on here. So that's what drove me to analyzing the code a bit more. In addition here, I probably didn't point out, but as you can see in the title, this is from the ORVX, Orvix, I'm just going to pronounce it that way, uh, .pw shop, um, and this is the shell v3. And uh, I don't know much about the, the history here behind the shell, so I guess I'll leave that maybe for another video or uh, for, you, for you to comment and let me know. Okay, so to get started, uh, I'm going to move into uh, Visual Studio Code. Really nothing additional here, no extensions or anything. And you can see that this is the entirety of the shell. And if we just use the mini bar, or the thumbnail view here, you can see it's just one big, large base64 encoded blob. There is, of course, the opening PHP tag, and if we wanted to, uh, there's going to be a number of evals. So you can see I, I highlight that eval statement, and there's at least, what, four of those there. Uh, that makes sense. We take some obfuscated code, base64 encoded, maybe it's compressed inside of there, maybe there's even some, um, some string manipulation that's further done. You'll see all of that kind of unravel here in a moment. But then that gets decoded, deobfuscated, and then it gets evaled, past the eval, and eval just simply executes that code as if it were valid PHP instructions. So likely they will be. So really, the, the big picture is that likely all of this content here, or, or a very good portion of it then, is what represents the actual web shell logic. Now, you'll notice this is all on one line. It's just I have line breaks, or, or I'm sorry, line wraps enabled in Visual Studio. And so we can see the entirety of it here. But if we were to take and toggle that off, right, which one big line. Now, that's actually kind of important. So I'm going to leave this here. And what I did in order to start unraveling this is to create a second copy of it that I could modify. And you'll see why in just a moment. With that, um, I went ahead and broke each one of these eval statements into its own component. And because this is just simply base64 encoded content, you can see that it's being decoded and then evaled. I went ahead and decoded that. We'll go back here to CyberChef. I got a couple of tabs open here, so bear with me. Um, let's just paste that in, disable that raw inflate for now. So all I really want is the from base 64 okay? And then there's the content. And uh, as you can see here, I'm just, I just pasted each one of those in. So we won't go through that with all of them. Um, the idea is that this is going to be executed in a sequential fashion. So by base64 decoding these these you know these these initial chunks, that can reveal the initial functionality here to get this you know at least start the process of deobfuscating this web shell's logic. What's important with this first one is that this value, this variable, uh, a bunch of zeros and O's, is actually a pointer to the file, right? And and as you'll see in just a moment then what it's doing is it's treating this content as an array and then it's indexing into certain portions of this array in order to then get that content and start to decode it. So it's important if we start to break this up, you know, add new lines, add tabs, whatever, um, we're changing the structure. So it'll modify how we access this 
um, which just makes it a little bit harder to deobfuscate. So that's the main reason for the two files here and, and modifying the second one and not the first. Okay, so not, maybe that doesn't quite make sense. So let's keep analyzing. We have another eval base 64. This becomes this function right here. Uh, and you'll see highlighting this as we get towards the end of this initial logic, um, it becomes an important function because this is called and then provided with another base64 eval. And then finally, there is this, this final eval. So, so this is the results of that. That's one more function. And then of course, there's the end of the, this halt compiler. So what does this do? Well, let's just want to point out a few things. It takes two arguments, $A, $B. Um, it has a array, and only the first three values of this array C are being utilized. Uh, that's used to calculate indexes. And the next part here is this base64 decode um, gzip inflate $K. And you'll see this actually. We can decode this real quick. Let's go back to our and inflate. You see it's the string rumbits. Uh, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but let's add this as a comment here. Um, <clears throat> if you, you'll notice that this dollar, this, this next variable here, this is used as a function down below. And so if we looked at the, the, the characters that it's building, the first one is the six. So uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, that becomes S. Uh, this becomes U, uh, then we have B, and uh, we can continue there, but it's substring, right? So that's how it decided to rebuild that functionality. Um, and then the second argument is B, and it's going to be one of these values. You can see if B equals 57, if it equals 197, if it equals 190, then what that's telling this function to do is essentially call substring, a is our string, which is the array of bytes from the file itself. Uh, C is the start index, and then B, or the second argument there is the end index, if anything. Right, so all this function is doing is it's being told how to index into this content here. So now if we continue, we'll have this final function, this right here, which is gonna be called essentially last. So this function, which is this one here, is going to build some content from the rest of the body of this PHP file. And then <clears throat> it's passed to this function, which is going to essentially do a gzip inflate and a base64 to code before it's returned to eval. Okay, so it's convoluted in a way, it's kind of clever in a way, um, but uh, the, to really get this unraveled then, what we have to look at is, uh, or at least what I, suspect to be the most significant is this chunk 109 or this index 190. And the reason I say that is because you'll notice with these substring calls, there is an end index. So for example, uh, 57, we're going to use our file pointer. We're going to add C0 plus C1. So that's 977 plus 318. And then it's going to end at C2, which is 40 bytes. So it's only reading 40 bytes. Uh, very similar, this is going to begin at index 977. It's going to end at C1, which is 318. So 318. This last one, though, is unbounded, right? It's going to add all of those values, to, or I should say the first three together, and then there's no end. So if you add those up, <clears throat> you get 1335. Already had that handy. Um, and if we look at this content, let's see, I'm just going to use... If you'll notice down below, we have line and column. I'm just going to use the column because the column represents then the characters into this, essentially into this ray. 1335, that's going to be zero based. This is not zero based. You can see if we select the first column, we're at column one. So we need to add one to offset. So 1336, and I'm just going to, let's see here, 1336 is the R right here. <clears throat> you'll notice down below, column 1336. And now what we can do is we can go all the way to the end and I'm gonna select everything except this dollar shell password because that would make sense to me that that won't be part of the base64 decoding. And now we can take this, we can go to 
Cyber Chef, and you'll see from base 64, I use the raw inflate operation. So there's our recipe and we get valid PHP here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I think I already did this, but I'm gonna copy that. We'll take a look at this in here and um, to help clean this up a little bit, at least this next stage or any of these stages for that matter, oftentimes what I will do is just do a find replace on the semicolon. Whoops, let's get this out of here. And there we go, semicolon. So you can see it's not perfect. It certainly doesn't do the formatting. There's plenty of utilities that help beautify. If you really need help with the formatting, that is getting proper indentation for you know control structures and whatnot. Uh, but to, even just to get started, this really helps because there's not a lot of code here before we see this base64 decode followed by an, an uncompress or an inflate followed by, now this is not modification, this rot13, rot which is just rotating bits 13, 13 bits to the right. Um, so you'll see that this that helps to ensure or, or to, to kind of finalize the deobfuscation of the string. Uh, we see an eval and then these variables. And what, what's happening here is if you were to decode this, you'd see that functions such as you know, GZ, GZ uncompress and base64 to code and string rot13 are being assigned those variables and then they are being called. So this likely is base64 to code. That has to, be hap that has to happen first. And then this is probably a gzip inflate. And then finally we have valid PHP that's called to eval. And this actually happens um, dozens of times over and over. It keeps using variations of base64 to code gzip uncompress and string route 13 and it just swaps these around i think there's even some reverse in here um, but the point is if you want to get to the actual code you've got to keep doing that over and over and over again and, and right now this is a very manual and becomes a very tedious process so there is an online um, unphp php decoder that works really well in a lot of situations. Um, I can't guarantee what they do with the content that you upload, so always be cognizant of your operational security. But in this case, you just go to their site, you paste in, in this case, I just pasted in this script, and, uh, and let it recursively handle all of that obfuscated code. And uh, eventually then, you can download this result, and we can, you can see that this looks like the vast majority, if not all of the content of this web shell. So we know that it did a really good job of, of likely getting all of that deobfuscation out of the way for us. Uh, so I went ahead, downloaded that file, and let's see if I can scroll over. I don't know how to make my, make the tabs. There we go. I guess I'll just zoom out a little bit. Uh, let's see, go to the top here and you can see, okay, that, that, sh that certainly looks like, um, you know, all of the, 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 the functionality here. So if we wanted to investigate now, let's say infected or infect. There we go. So this looks like this is the logic then that is going to be performed in order to infect that system. So uh, here we can now spend a little time. I'm not going to do it for this video. Uh, but here we could spend some time, of course, investigating the logic and seeing if our web shell that we acquired is even a trustworthy web shell, um, as well as all of the functionality and capability as well. So wanted to just take a few minutes and go through the, you know, the obfuscation of the PHP I thought was interesting. Um, otherwise, it is very similar to the previous web shell that we've investigated. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the next video.